While browsing for other things, I came across this little heater on eBay and I was quite intrigued because it wasn't that expensive. Let me just pull in the advert for it here, the listing. Oh, I'll just push this out of the way, although it's very, very hot being a heater. It says, desktop electric winter small sun heater office household mini stove roasty. And I did order the pink one. They sent a blue one. Jeez, that's so annoying. It cost a staggering £5.56 with shipping. And I was kind of interested in seeing the construction of it because in the listing, it looks like it's made of plastic. It turns out that it's all metal. It's quite nice. The only bit of plastic is in the back and they do seem to have proper thermal isolation. It uses a quartz YouTube heating element with a filament inside it, a heating element, and if you lay it down on the instructions, it scorches them. I did it kind of deliberately. It didn't just scorch the instructions all the way through, it actually scorched my bench at the front here quite badly as well. Not to worry. Uh, notable things about instructions, which are all in Chinese, uh, it's got a schematic for helpful troubleshooting, which goes live, switch, Heater neutral. Hmm, useful. So this is uh, available in a few different ratings. This was the smallest. I think this was described as a 4-inch, although it's not really what I'd call 4-inch. And this was uh, supposedly between 200 and 250 watts. Well, that's spot on here. Uh, it's drawing just over an amp on 247 volt supply, 249 watts, so just barely short of 250 watts. Oh, there it is, 250. And the power factor is, of course, for a complete resistive load, it's unity, it's perfect power factor. It also comes with a little switch in line. Interesting stuff. So let's take it to bits, and this is where I have to stop filming when we turn and let it cool down, because it is very hot. I should mention that it's kind of, it's got that dull, radiant glow, it's quite nice. Uh, it doesn't have any safety features though, so if it does fall over on your bench, it will probably set fire to things. I mean, if it's just sitting down like that, it's going to get very hot underneath it. Mmm, yeah. And if it fell off your table, or or workbench or get covered in fabric. There's no thermal cutout. There's no uh, tilt switch. It's just purely a heater. And as such, I would regard it as not really UK compliant. It's more sort of product design for the Chinese market, perhaps, where they don't really give a shit if people burn their houses down, apparently. But anyway, I'm going to let that cool down and then we'll take it apart and take a look at the construction and see if the components are reusable in other applications. The unit has had a chance to cool now, and looking at this, looking at the fact it's in the angleable sort of metal cage frame and the back of this, it almost makes me wonder if this started off as a design for a fan case, particularly because there's a label on the back that is covering some existing holes, and it makes me think that you might have the cable in there, like there might have been a motor in there with a sort of fan, I'm not really sure about that. Let's rip the label off and take a look at the label, which incidentally says 908, 200 watt, 220 volt, 50 hertz. Let's peel that off, revealing a little square recess and a couple of holes. Yeah, they've, they've designed this for mounting other things and that's interesting. The front comes off. Well, let's take the side, the angleable, uh, tiltable stand off. I don't know if we need to do this, but I'll take it anyway. So it's got these little rubber things, which uh, feel a bit sort of... Well, I guess they've probably been exposed to the heat, so they've stuck onto this sort of lacquer. We'll take this one out as well. It should make it just that little bit easier to handle. I shall move that out the way. And shuffle that to the side, and I'll just pull that off as well. Yeah, the rubber has really stuck onto that. When I turned this off, it started cooling down. I'll take these screws out now. It started cooling down, and it cooled down quite quickly, but uh, it makes, for quite some time after, it makes those sort of tink noises as the metal just sort of finds its original shape. It does that for quite some time. Like half an hour later, it will just randomly go tink again. I'm trying to think of other uses for this in its existing form, but... Yeah, some kind of hot plate. I suppose you could do something. I think there are better options uh, for, like, 
reflowing of soda uh, on circuit boards, but I don't think this is <laughs> ideal for anything like that. There must be application for this little heat element, though, and before MD says, yes, I know I'm touching a quartz heat element with my bare fingers, that means greasy fingers, so uh, that would potentially require it gets a good thorough clean afterwards. So this little aluminium dish is this sort of pie dish-like thing. It's, it's stuck onto that uh, lacquer. The enamel they've used in this, it makes that smell when you run it for a while. Initially, when you turn it on, you get that, what you always get off heaters, you get that slight wisp of smoke, and it is the enamel burning off this, the, uh, the solvents, the remaining solvent uh, coming out of it. I'm not necessarily going to be able to pull this all the way out because it's got one of these horrible little cable restraint glands. Let's see if I can pop that out. I do have a pair of snips and we'll try and just lever that out. I hate these things. They're sometimes quite hard to get a new cable in if you get these things because it usually requires a very specific tool that crushes the... Uh, restraint the cable grip in at the same time as uh, letting you push this into the housing but uh, it's really not coming out very easily is it I don't know if that's because the wires are pulling tight hmm it's it's not fun I'll keep going though oh there it goes there it goes that's good and I'll just put this in here and open that out these horrible little things they have this uh, cable restraint that really crushes against the cable to actually force it into a tight kink inside for a strain relief and then they push in. It's just ordinary PVC cable. Okay. Oh, and I can actually see bare copper. I think they've just n nicked it in there, or is that just me being excessively violent taking it out? They get heat shrink sleeving over this. They've got crimps. Let's see if we can get those nuts off. Oh, the nuts come off finger tight. That's not necessarily that great. What about the other one? Is it finger tight too? Yes, it is. They do have little spring washers, but they're not really super tight. And then... The plastic at the back of this is slightly dimpled. I, I don't think that's happened as a result of the heat from the light, though. Let's uh, get another screwdriver and whip that out as well then. Let's pull this right out. Let's just disassemble it completely. Let's face it, I'm not going to be using this for its intended purpose just because it poses too much of a risk. Unless you physically clamped it down in such a way that it could never ever move, then it's, there's too much risk of it falling over. Um, it looks, there is a little heat dimple there, but I don't think it is from the heat. So this is a little cup at the back, just to shield the electrical connections. Keep in mind this isn't grounded. So worst case is if the quartz sleeve shattered and the filament dropped down and touched this, the thing could become live. I don't know what the risk of that is. There are little tabs coming through here. Oh, quite stiff tabs actually. Where are my little tiny cheap eBay long nose pliers? Let's uh, fold these little tabs up. These have been put through and in some instances twisted and these are just like, it's just to really clamp it in place. So I shall lever these up. Yep. And that means the whole heat element should then pop out the front. So they've kind of, some of them they've just pushed through and folded and some of them they've twisted. Is that going to come out now? This is very thin. We're talking pie dish here. It really is super ultra thin aluminum. Aluminium. Let's just tweed all that through. The these tabs, when they've pushed them through, have been quite a friction fit to the side to the size of the holes that they made in the pie dish here. Is that coming out? Yes, that is coming out now. Total destruction. The primary thing of interest here is this heating element. So, before they've uh, potted it in with the cement, the sort of ceramic cement here, they have put these little um, crimping things in, these little uh, ret retention plates. So it is uh, clearly designed for this application. Oh, that's just popped right out. So there's the, there's the heating element. 
slinky. Uh, going inside from one side to the other in that quartz tube. It's that lovely quartz that's got that sort of um, diffused mother of pearl type look to it. It's quite nice, actually. Interesting component. And that inside, the wire is, oh, that's interesting. We can take it apart even further because it looks like there's a screw going from the inside another spring washer and the nut and then the wire oh they've, what they've actually done is this is a coiled heating element they have basically just pulled a section of the coils out and they've put the screw through them they've not wrapped it specifically around the screw it is just going through a bunch of the coils off the end of the heating element that's an interesting approach I suppose it's a logical approach. It's quite hard to join onto this uh, heat element material. It's not like something you can, well, you couldn't solder onto it because uh, it would just basically just melt the solder. So, yeah, they've just pulled a little uh, bunch of the uh, coil uh, loops off and just stuffed a screw through it. That's an interesting approach. That's quite interesting, indeed. I could give you the resistance of this. Well, do you want to take a guess? I've already told you that it was drawing approximately... 250, uh, it was doing 250 watts, uh, one amp at 250 volts. But keep in mind that the resistance will change with heat probably. So let's do the maths on that. Let's bring in the pink calculator because, well, something has to be pink even if they didn't send me the right thing. I'm also liking this cage here. This uh, must have other uses. It's an interesting assembly. It's really nicely made. I guess it's ultimately just mass produced. I wouldn't like to be in that factory. I can imagine it smells like it. It'll just smell of that machine and oil and stuff like that you get, and then the sort of smell of the lacquer in the other part of the factory. So uh, we had uh, 240 watts uh, at one amp would be about 240. Uh, should I say, uh, what was that again? It was 250 volts. It was passing an amp. R equals V, the 250 divided by 1 is 250 ohms, isn't it? I, I don't need to calculate that. Uh, let's bring in a meter and see if it is remotely near that or if I've just completely got my head in a twist and screwed up. Let's put this to the 2K setting. And keep in mind that the resistance value will vary with heat. It usually goes up. Yep, yeah, 236 ohms, that's, that's close enough. Okay. Useful enough. Also useful in a sense that you could theoretically change the heating element in that if you had, say for instance, you can just buy heating elements online. What is this one? I'm going to have to test this one now. They sell loose heat elements on eBay. eBay is great for just getting stuff. Uh, and this one is for furnaces, I think, for making your own um, glass furnaces and smelting furnaces. This one is about 157 ohms, so that would have resulted in more current, more power. If you stuck it into that, it would get hotter. Okay, okay. I think that one was rated 300 watts-ish. Not really sure. Right, okay, what else can I take to bits? I've taken this apart, so let's take the switch part. Look at all the ceramic cement that's come out. That's the cement that was used to glue the quartz in there. I suppose ultimately that means you. That while I had those off, I could have taken these off. If you wanted to use this heat element, I think, suppose you could just get a pair of snips. Let's test that. And you could have just cut this in half. Not sure how well that would work. Let's try it. Without damaging the quartz. Yeah, you can get it off. Easy enough. Okay, useful to know. Let's see if this does break the live. Not that it really matters, it's, uh, the plug can go in both ways around, but we'll see what the construction of this is like inside. It does break the live. They've soldered it onto an ordinary switch in there, so that's kind of, that's actually quite neat. I quite like that little box then. It has other uses. Okay. Uh, right. So that's it. That is what is inside. 
quite easy to take to bits. Is that the right screw? I don't know. I'll just see if it screws up. Yes, it kind of screwed up. And the construction heat element itself. Interesting thing. Very flimsy metal padish here. Now, the thermal separation it was using, because this was sat in here, and because that uh, heat element was hovering in thin air, although I'm a bit suspicious that these could be subjected to fairly high temperature, not that it's really neat, given that that one's kind of really kind of bare anyway. That's a bit... At least it's got the plastic housing there. But because the way it's sandwiched in, it keeps that whole hot assembly suspended in thin air. So most of the heat will be reflected forwards out the back, out the front, should I say. And the heat that does creep out the back will be low enough that the thermal convection of air flowing through will keep the electronics at the... Well, electronics, keep the electrics at the back cool. It's the same technique they use in some LED fixtures where they've got the LED panel at the front, then a spacer with air flowing through. The LED floodlights, the first ones are like that. So the electronic module at the back stays completely cold because it's just isolated from the heat source completely with that air path. So there we go. It's an interesting little thing. It's certainly worth stripping apart for components. Don't know what you'd use them for. Or for a pretty quartz tube. But that's it. Well worth taking to bits and quite an interesting little device, even if not quite up to our safety standards.